is the main mechanism then because of cancer proliferating because melatonin is being suppressed? Is this the main reason or is there more behind that? And is it because melatonin is very anti-cancer and, you know, dictating apoptosis and, and things like that and autophagy? Or is there more than just melatonin? Well, melatonin is part of it, and certainly melatonin is a very important suppressor of cancer cells, right? So it's a protective mechanism that naturally in the body, when we're asleep in the dark, it is suppressing any cancer cells that happen to be lurking in our body. But the more important thing is the circadian disruption, as I talked about, when those clocks get out of in line with each other, that breaks down the body's natural, all sorts of other mechanisms. And that's, that leads to more rapid growth, more. And, and it's not, let's not focus this on a cancer issue. It's not a cancer story. Um, it is an obesity story, a diabetes story, a heart disease story. There's a host of medical conditions uh, that result from this. Uh, it's psychiatric illness, depression. Um, you know, all sorts of things are linked now. And death rates. Uh, the latest study just uh, just came out as a preprint shows that a big study of 88,000 uh, men and women in England, aged in their 60s, were all studied, they all wore devices that detected how much light they were exposed to. They're 24 seven, they had these devices that say, how much light are they getting particularly in the nighttime hours? And then they tracked their survival over the next six years. The people who had the brightest, most light exposure at night died 30% faster. The survival rates were 30% less, right? They died faster than the ones who were in the dark conditions at night. Um, that's a huge thing, right? In other words, it's not just the diseases, it's also the end result. So anybody who's concerned about longevity, um, you know, one of the core things you need to do is get exposed to um, absence of blue-rich light at night, but most importantly also, presence and exposure to blue rich light during the day you know you one of you are there i see is sitting outside the you, um and um that ryan's outside and you i guess you're in your garage with sunlight coming in you know that's the issue getting daylight in the mornings um uh is the most critical thing um and i think one of the interesting studies there just as a you know they built this uh, psychiatric hospital in scandinavia um with half the rooms were facing east and south. The other half of the rooms were facing north and west. And they were admitting patients with a variety of psychiatric diagnoses, depression, and, 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 and all sorts of other conditions into this hospital. And the ones who were admitted to the rooms that got morning sunlight, in other words, facing east and south, were discharged from that psychiatric hospital twice as quickly their stays were half as long as those who were admitted into the Northwest facing rooms. Same medical treatment, same doctors, everything else. Huge impact, in other words, of getting bright light in the morning. And that bright light in the morning is also a very important part of the combating of the uh, risk of cancer, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, because it is strengthening the synchronization of the circadian rhythms. It's reducing circadian disruption. It makes you more resistant to any light you might see at night. So you need to do both. It's light during the day, absence of blue during the night, 